Hi Aries, how are you? My name is LB, welcome to the Untitled Tarot. So I've laid out your spread this week with the Heroin Tarot and the Elemental Oracle. It's a nifty little mix, I'm not gonna lie. It seems to me that you are rounding the bend in a very difficult season of your life and there seems to be support by way of some unusual guidance. It's a new approach that you are being asked to take right now, Aries. And if you are able to do that, I think it kind of sets off a bit of a domino effect, but they're actually showing me like a stick of dynamite and how you light it. And it takes a little while for it to reach the stick. But once it does, it's like, boom. It's like a big internal change that is happening for you and the way that you kind of exist within your body, the way you relate to your own energy. And I actually think in a lot of ways, it changes how you pull in and channel energy moving forward, like how you pull in messages, how you recognize signs that seems to be shifting as a result of this as well. So let's pray and then we'll let's get into it. <clears throat> My throat chakra. Father God, thank you for bringing... I've been okay. There's a throat chakra thing in your reading. And I feel it coming up for me too. Father God, thank you for bringing me and Aries in for this reading. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Aries highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and the honor for these messages. Please allow me to be of the highest of service to the utmost high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Aries, <clears throat> we're starting off with you as this Knight of Swords. Now, when I first pulled this card, I immediately felt a bit of this defensive energy, but it feels more like being on alert. You're on high alert right now. Your energy, something has sort of pinged your energy and you have your sword up, like ready to defend yourself. The five of Pentacles and the Five of Swords is coming up next. These two fives, 55. It feels as if your energy is picking up on an occurrence that has happened to you many times. And it is the ways in which you get tripped up, you end up in a loss, in a deficit. With this Five of Swords, there is always this feeling when this happens to you that it is in some way nefarious. Something has been taken from you, something that shouldn't have happened, but you're never quite able to figure out why. And part of the reason I say that is because in this Five of Swords card, is this the right one? The woman, do you see how the sword is going through the eye of the skull? It gives me the impression that you have been on your journey, you've been in a cycle, and then out of nowhere, something comes, trips you up, you end up losing a lot. Maybe it's money, maybe it's confidence, maybe it's faith, maybe it's stability, firm footing. And even after that situation or that period is dead, it's gone, it's done, there's still a blind spot, like there's still a blockage with that eye that you can't understand why that thing happened. And there's something about the shift in the energy or there's something that your spirit just seems to be picking up on. The wind is changing that immediately you go, it's happening again. It's sort of like when you can feel yourself going from a bad day to melancholy to depression. It's sort of like this slow slide downward. And I think the, a big difference is that you're noticing it. Even if that feels really uncomfortable, I actually think it's a good sign that you're able to sort of notice the cues when something is about to come in and hit you or you find yourself sliding into, again, depression or, or melancholy. I do think that is a good sign, but you haven't quite been able to figure out why this has happened to you. And because you sense another wave getting ready to sort of bash against the rocks, you are absolutely like on high alert. Your curiosity is peaked. There's almost this looking around the corners, like looking over your shoulder type of energy. But what seems to be happening is this equator card to make equal. This feels Aries like as your energy or your attention is being peaked and you're lifting up your sword to defend yourself. There's kind of this quiet whisper from inside and it seems to be coming from the shadow. And it says, no, Aries, 
Put down your sword. That is not the way. Look over here. Look in this direction. What really sticks out to me in this card is that the lighter aspect of you seems more connected to the celestial realm. Whereas this more shadow aspect of you, there, there's something about her flowers here. It feels very grounded in like earthy <clears throat> energy or earth elements. The physical, the physical, the body. You might with this sword be trying to once again rack the mind, look for downloads, look for confirmations about what this energy is that keeps tripping you up. Is it something outside of me? Is it my own self-sabotage? Like, what is it? Just really, there's nothing worse than an overthinking Aries. I got to tell you that. As someone who has a, a good Aries placement, I, I can assure you that. And the shadow goes, no, no, don't look in the mind. Look in the body. Let me guide you right now. I know initially you like to go to your higher self, but I'm here too. Let me show you the way. Let's get deep into the body right now. It's almost like instead of trying to download it, <clears throat> noticing a shift in the energy from your feet up. It's kind of like when a stampede of buffalo start coming in. And you can kind of feel like an earthquake, like you can kind of feel the vibrations in the earth before it hits, that that is a better way to discern when these waves are coming. And so you end up in this outer core fluidity. And so your shadow Aries is coming out and saying, put down your sword, step out of your higher self for a moment, step back into the body, recognize the power of the shadow you do not have to stiffen and brace yourself against a perceived fall. If anything, Aries, it will benefit you right now to be flexible in general, but to also be flexible to a different approach. When I pulled this fluidity card, they brought me back <clears throat> to this memory. Oh, I'm sorry. They brought me back to this memory <clears throat> that I have as a kid. A lot of you guys know I'm from New Jersey, born, bred. I've been here my whole life. So we're kind of born and bred to be like these, <clears throat> well, these beach bunnies. And something that you learn when you're little, being at the beach unsupervised in the 90s, is that when a wave comes, you have a couple options. You have the ability to time it and jump over the wave. You have the ability to hold your breath and dive underneath the wave to get through it. Or you have the ability to turn around and allow your body to float, to be fluid, to be flexible. So that way, when that wave comes, it actually kind of gently pushes you right to shore. There's something here about the shadow letting you know that you can use the energy of movement that comes in that normally knocks you off your pedestal to actually use that centrifugal force, right? To use that kinetic energy to push you further to where you want to be, to push you further to stability and when you do that one just her bareness here her nakedness there is something you see all this hair it's very lady godiva it's the message of your energy expands your energy naturally becomes more protected aries when you are tapped into the body because your body is the thing that feels the vibrations first it's like when you're at the beach and you're turned around talking to your friend in the water and you have that eerie feeling and you look behind your shoulder and you see the waves starting to build. You don't do that through the mind. Like you do that because the body is sending signals to the mind. So you have the ability to tap in to these shifting waves, these shifting energies quicker. It will give you more time to be flexible or adaptable in your approach. And it will actually allow you to use whatever kinetic force, be it negative or positive, to actually push you further to safety. And once you realize that, there's something about not feeling so vulnerable, actually feeling a lot more confident automatically in the body because you're recognizing how much your body does for you on an energetic and on a spiritual level. It's this really gorgeous thing. And so here you are sort of pushed forward, walking up to shore. And when that happens, you hit this two of cups and you hit this justice. So almost immediately after trying this new approach, you seem to be greeted on the shore by <clears throat> the aspect of your higher self, maybe some of your spiritual team, maybe a friend that is tapped into your process. There's this coming together here. It feels like a celebration. It's like, wow, Aries, you did it. 
you allowed yourself to be flexible. You allowed yourself to not breathe fire for a moment. You also allowed yourself to not be thrown off that pedestal. You moved your chest pieces in a different way by tapping into your body and utilizing the power of your shadow. This is amazing. This is balance because don't forget the equator is to make equal. What is justice? What is the scales if not to make something equal? But what I always like about this justice card is like she's got style. She's unconventional in the way that she brings justice. And there's a message here for you Aries about the realization that balance or justice for you is not to stop the waves from coming because that initially may have been like your primary goal. <clears throat> I want to stop the waves. I want to stop the interference. I want to stop the disruption. I want to stop being messed with. Like I want to stop all of this stuff. Whereas through the laws of nature, like energy waves, it must come an atom. It must always be in motion, right? Energy never dies. So Trying to just stop it from occurring isn't really an effective use of your energy. But what is balance, how to actually make it equal, is your ability to react and respond to these energetic waves differently. And not just differently, but to do it in style, to do it in the way that like you look at it after the fact and kind of want to high five yourself. Like I didn't, I didn't let that overtake me. I didn't allow myself to get so triggered that I got thrown off my balance. I didn't allow myself to drown. I was able to be much more strategic. There's something about style and strategy. And I think that's adding to sort of this strut that this outer cord has. And it's like this new level of kind of feeling yourself and feeling confident and like kind of like energetically you're getting your shit together in a new way. Now we have this gravity card coming next. So there seems to be perhaps like a few occurrences where you're turning around and riding the wave into shore feeling good about yourself. There are these moments where you're kind of overcoming your own defensive nature or your own repetition, right? And in this groundedness, this gravity card, it feels like there's something happening. You're noticing this shift as well. Perhaps when you are meditating or when you're dreaming, it feels like your dream world is getting more active. There's a lot more happening because you're so tapped in to this grounded earth energy because you're so much more present in your body. It feels like you're able to commune with nature in like a much more supportive way. And so I think that's contributing to an increase in activity or even what's the right word? relocation in your dreams it just feels like your dreams are really busy it feels like you're connecting to like these elemental energies it feels like you're connecting to animal energies there might be a lot of animal symbolism in your dreams a lot of new animal allies coming forward for you as well with these planets it's almost like the planets are talking to you in a different way and that's where I'm kind of getting this idea of like your gifts are changing how your channeling energy is shifting and changing the animals, the planets, they're speaking directly to you now through your dreams, through different symbolism in your dreams. But also what seems to be happening is the sun is coming up. And if you notice in this card, it's almost like, you see these connections back here? It almost looks like wires. It looks like a network. It looks like electricity, right? You're developing sort of these new spiritual pathways, like these new ways that you are connecting. And again, it's not through necessarily the mind. It enters through the body. I always say in my classes that when you shut yourself down from feeling, when you shut yourself down from the body, especially for my empaths, you do yourself such a disservice because there is a wealth of information, power, ability, um, spiritual connection that happens within the physical vessel. And as you're going through this process, you actually get closer and closer to what feels like your true nature, Aries. You are a fire sign. So every time you move your chest pieces in a different strategic way, you're noticing the difference in your energy. You're finding yourself more connected in your dreams. And you're finding sort of like your fires being relit. You're getting closer and closer to the flames. You are being reactivated. This aspect of you that is very much who you are <clears throat> but has maybe been buried underneath overthinking or a disconnection from the body or over analysis it's coming back 
and then this ocean cards comes out and I thought that this was interesting because in both of these cards there's a woman standing on top of the world but in this one she's a child so you're also tapping back into this spirit of of play of freedom of also being able to like take risks when you're not overly calculated or overly analytical or even kind of skittish or paranoid about every energy or, or every hiccup or everything that happens all of the time it's so easy to get into that mode especially as an intuitive without community right you're able to take more risks you're able to balance more and i see you operating using all of the elements in these cards you have fire you have water you are on the earth you also have all of this air kind of swirling around you <clears throat> and maybe there's something interesting coming through just right now about you're on the earth you're in the earth aries i, I mean i don't know if you're one of those types of people whoever you are watching this that resonates with being a star seed or being this or never feeling quite at home on earth right but the thing is is that you are on earth and earth is your home and this is where you live and and you look and you feel and you're made up of all the same stuff that that the earth is made up of right it's like you are made up of salts and minerals and, and all of this stuff so when you don't connect to the earth you're not truly connecting to yourself, which means you're not truly able to come into balance and alignment with your own energy. You're not truly able to pull in messages other than just through your psyche, which can very easily become overloaded, igniting an unhealthy level of fire within you. Does that make sense? And so we have Volcano coming up next. And there's the way that you are approaching fire differently, the way that you are connecting to all of these elements and you're noticing the shift in how you feel and confidence in your abilities and confidence and safety in your body as well. It's like you're growing a new appreciation for what your body can do other than just the mechanical stuff it does to keep you alive. You're pulling in different messages. It's almost like you're able to more easily telepathically communicate with nature or with animals. The planets are speaking to you directly, not even through the charts. It's like you're understanding what the planets are going to do before you even check the transits. It feels like that. And as it's happening, you're sort of kind of being forged. It's like there's this new version of you that seems to be coming up. It's being forged like a sword. It's like you are the sword now. You used to hold this sword to defend yourself with or to check confusion against like your own understanding at that time but now you are becoming the sword forged by fire your territory is growing your power is growing you're taking on your natural fire energy in a new way but this nine of swords comes up and what i noticed in these two cards is in both and that's why i said my throat chakra in both of these cards you seem to be holding your hands right above your neck and so there is this building, there is this pressure that is coming up and it's this expansion that's happening within you, again, in your body, in your confidence, in your intuition, and in you're connecting to a lot more, a lot more. And there's something about you having an inability to express that or act it out, live it out. Does that make sense? There's a blockage here. And so... I think it's stressing you out too because you might be struggling with some of the issues that the magician has when he isn't able to bring all of that high velocity spiritual or inspiring energy into the physical. It just kind of like sizzles you up, right? There's sort of this boiling point that you're hitting. But this Ace of Pentacles comes up next. And so it seems as if there is a gem or a nugget something that seems to be coming to you what feels like in the morning like sort of when you're laying in bed half awake half asleep and I don't know why I feel the need to share this with you but there was a morning maybe like I don't know a year and a half ago two years ago and I, I had a lot happening to me in my in my dreams that evening and when I woke up when I was half asleep and half awake I heard this tiny little Irish voice in my ear that said um be gentle with yourself in the wee hours of the morning so it's obviously one of my ancestors on my dad's side. I don't know why I felt the need to share that with you, but be gentle with yourself in the wee hours of the morning because there's a lot of activations. There's a lot of things shifting and moving within you, coming online, expanding while you're sleeping. So just be gentle. 
with yourself in the wee hours of the morning. But there seems to be like a nugget about why it's difficult for you to express this or speak out about this or again fully like live out these new energies that are coming online it feels like you feel better like you feel more like yourself even the mind is a lot clearer but it's like you just it's like a frog in your throat like you just quite can't get it out and it seems to have something to do with like this eight of swords and the five of cups it's something about the fact that It's taken you so many times. It's almost like in the past when you figured out what you should have said or what you should have done. It almost feels like it was too late, a day, you know, a day late and a dollar short. And in this five of cups, it's the idea of having to pour out that idea or pour out that action or pour out that project. It's like I keep hearing when I look at this card, I keep hearing the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance is that there's sort of this stage fright aspect of you Aries that you've had for a very long time that when you get an idea or a project or an instinct to do something you immediately start overthinking it that starts blocking you and you can no longer kind of see your ass from your elbow right it's like you can't see I feel like I must be channeling some ancestors because that stuff that like my family says like don't know your ass from your elbow like I bet you dollars to donuts like it, like there, there might be some like ancestral assistance coming in to help kind of push you through this but something will come in you overthink it you start feeling blocked off and immobile you've lost sight of what the original idea or project or instinct was to begin with and by the time you remember it right you have to sort of pour out that idea because it feels like the time has passed and that may be the exact situation that you've been sitting in with this Five of Pentacles and this Five of Swords. The moment has passed. Now you lost that opportunity or you lost access to that wave of energy or the ability to transmute something. And now you are in a weakened position than you were previously. And you might not have known if this is something that was coming from within you, kind of a sabotage or like an inner blockage energy, or if it was interference from the outside. Oftentimes, I think it's both. I think they, they normally link up together. But part of what this gem or this nugget is, it has to do with this pressure card. Card number 26 that breaks down to an eight. Um, eights talk a lot about karma for me. Again, equal energy exchanges. Yes, and this is a way that you can push through this own karmic cycle or relationship that you have with yourself, Aries. And there's this feeling of using your fire using your connection to all of these elements, using all of the tools in your toolbox to push you out of the energetics and into the physical. When I look at this card, it looks like she's trying to manifest herself in matter. It reminds me of like in your meditations or in your daydreams or, or even in your regular dreams and you see yourself doing all this cool stuff, but then you wake up in the morning and it's like you're just like a muggle again. Like you just... You put on your suit and tie and you just go back to being Clark Kent. Like you never get to have this Superman moment in your life. It reminds me of this scene. And they haven't been a lot of movies, but I don't know why. It's Life with Mikey seems to be. Maybe that's like a like a confirmation for you guys. But there's this one scene at the end of the movie and there's this really pretty girl at the end. And she's very shy. She doesn't really want to talk to anyone. She's like very introspective. She's nervous to get up there and sing. But once she does it, she like blows the roof off the joint. It reminds me of something like that. The power, the ideas, the confidence, all of the stuff that exists only within your own mind, only within your meditations, only within your dream world and needing to push yourself, Aries, to bring that into the physical, the recognition of like, no one's going to do it for you. We cannot push you like the fool over the cliff like you have to be the one to kind of squeeze what you know you are capable of what you see yourself doing how you see yourself expressing and you have to push yourself just like how you use the wave of even if it was uncomfortable energy to push you forward to shore you have to use the wave of your own power of your own energy to push that potential into the physical for you because if you do we end on this animals card companionship and if you're able to do that it feels like you become 
tapped back in to your own primal and animalistic nature. And in that, your senses are heightened. You're not insecure subconscious animals are not self-conscious but they have keen instincts for what survival gathering resources protecting their young and those are all the things that you have been trying to do aries and so when you push yourself to make it physical to bring potential energy into kinetic energy you tap into the this primal instinct that you have you tap back into the animal in you who is able to operate with such a keen sense of instinct and intuition but also use it appropriately and strategically because it's also deeply connected to the earth to nature it knows when the winds change it knows when the birds stop singing what it means right does that make sense and in that you actually don't have to defend yourself as much or be on guard as much because the messages come in a lot sooner for you a lot clearer but also because nature herself the animal kingdom itself is more supportive to you does that make sense like i noticed for me that my personal prosperity increased a lot when i started being intentional about honoring the earth spending time picking up garbage feeding the birds like right and so the birds favor me like the birds bring in blessings they bring in messages a lot sooner as a bird comes <laughs> right past right like there's something about that that you were able to have more to communicate with more to work with because you were tapped into the animal in you so there's kind of an interesting reading but this is what we got so i hope that this was helpful for you i hope that you enjoyed it and it gave you a few things to think about. I am going to go do an extended reading for you. If you're interested in your extended reading or your May monthly reading, those are going to be the top two links in the description box. The Mystery School for Intuitives are still taking on new students for the month of May. You can also find all of the extended and monthly readings, Lunar Sound Baths, stuff like that on Patreon. And if you want to book with me personally for a reading or an intuitive coaching session, you can book with me through my website. I love you so much, Aries, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.